Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Thursday the 14th of August 2025. Heaps to talk about in today's forecast update. We've got rainfall and storms expected across southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales this afternoon. Rainfall ongoing up in far north Queensland and showers and storms across southwestern Western Australia. Storms forecast across southeastern Australia on a potential low pressure system into the Tasman Sea, so heaps to get through today. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. Let's get stuck straight into things this morning with the big story, which is going to be those storms across southeast Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales tonight. There is a good chance of thunderstorms developing in a, what is going to be a rare August thunderstorm outbreak across southeast Queensland. If last night was anything to go off, we're going to have another bumper night for thunderstorms and I'll see if I can get some radar imagery loaded for what happened last night. But just the tailing end of the thunderstorms that came through last night, this is a close to nine o'clock of what was going through Grafton. Hailstones like snowfall was what I was told happened in Grafton last night. A bit of a th strong thunderstorm came through Grafton and dumped some pretty significant hailstones. And this is a pretty big cell here on its way out. So we had some great thunderstorms across southeast Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales, and they're likely to be 10 times better than that later on tonight. So right now, the severe thunderstorm risk isn't exactly that high. We are talking about the risk of some hailstones, winds, and heavy rainfall here and there across southeast Queensland, but we're not talking about a widespread uh, September, October, or November severe thunderstorm outbreak. So I want to get that out of everybody's head right now. But for this time of the year, we are talking about a gnarly outbreak of thunderstorms, and some of which could go severe in a few places. So let's break that down for you right now. Later on this afternoon, we're expecting plenty of convective development as that southeasterly flow pushes moisture up in towards southeast Queensland in an incredibly favourable environment given the time of the year across southeast Queensland. It's going to be hot, humid, dry in the upper levels, moist in the lower levels, and also quite cool into the upper levels as well. So these thunderstorms are going to have an absolute bumper time developing here, especially, again, considering the time of the year. There's also plenty of instability in the environment as well. The convective available potential energy values are through the roof for the, uh, the time of the year that we're in. I feel like I'm going to say that for the next five minutes pretty much on and off, so get ready for it, and then thunderstorms are just going to make the most of those conditions. We're expecting thunderstorms to be at their most prominent at around two or three o'clock this afternoon, pushing into about six or seven o'clock this evening in locations around Toowoomba, Warwick, down towards Bollingar and Stanthorpe on the Queensland New South Wales border with a chance of a few popping over in towards the northeast of New South Wales. Good chance of thunderstorms as well south of the Gold Coast around Byron Bay, Lismore and Grafton, where they were last night, and we're also expecting a good chance of thunderstorms, especially on the southern side of the Capricorn corner coast down around Bundaberg and Harvey Bay and then pushing up through Agnes Water Gladstone and then as you get further north towards Brockhampton chances do begin to diminish there. Right now, it doesn't look like thunderstorms are expected to be too prevalent through the Brisbane city area. The greatest chance of seeing thunderstorms or convective showers through the Brisbane metro area, including the Gold Coast, will be somewhere between uh, midday to about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Then the chance does begin to diminish there, and the chance does then get, uh, begin to increase further inland out around Kingaroy and at Toowoomba. But for now, Brisbane, I wouldn't be expecting anything in the way of significant thunderstorm activity. Definitely nothing severe coming through for Brisbane later tonight, but I wouldn't be surprised if we did see some heavy showers and some storms blow through the Brisbane metro area. Uh, one or two storms are possible between about midday out to about three o'clock this afternoon and this evening. You can see on the radar and satellite imagery there are already a few storms developing offshore right now. This one's actually quite strong offshore from Morton Island. It's got some pretty intense precipitation in it, up to 200 millimetres an hour. Obviously, that's only for a few minutes, so it's not sustained over the course of an entire hour, but it gives you an idea of some of these thunderstorms that we're expecting later tonight. For this time of the year, again, very strong thunderstorms that we're expecting later on this afternoon and this evening. Now, I know a lot of people use convective available potential energy, which is basically a metric of how much energy is in the atmosphere available for these thunderstorms to make the most of to forecast thunderstorm chances across southeast Queensland and it's a great metric to use. It can be a bit misleading at times but just have a look at the numbers for this time of the year. When we're talking about high or higher than about two or three hundred joules per kilogram which is an arbitrary number but when we're talking about higher values than that across southeast Queensland in this time of the year we're talking about a mean thunderstorm outbreak and now we're talking about values up around 750 joules per kilogram of air, uh, air available energy in uh, the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to make the most of. That is some really significant stuff. There's some big numbers and perhaps the biggest numbers that I've seen across Southeast Queensland for mid-August. It's a sign of things to come for Southeast Queensland. We're going to be talking about enhanced thunderstorm and rainfall activity into the coming couple of months, especially through September and October. So these storms, they're not going anywhere. And what we do see tonight is a great precursor of what is to come across Southeast Queensland and just Greater Queensland in general. So just to revise on that, not many severe thunderstorms are possible tonight. One or two severe cells are definitely possible into the 
uh, northern parts of the Sunshine Coast and the southern parts of the Capricorna Coast. And then again out around Toowoomba, uh, down towards Warwick, Wollongarra and Stanthorpe. There's a few thunderstorms that could get quite strong down in this part of New, uh, into uh, Queensland as well. And then over into the border, into the northeast of New South Wales, there will be a chance of one or two strong storms developing around Coffs Harbour and Grafton. Once again, especially around Grafton, pushing north to Lismore later on in the evening at around 6 or 7 o'clock. But at this point in time, widespread severe thunderstorms are not anticipated in these thunderstorms here. Whilst they will pack a punch for the month of August, they got nothing on what's going to come through in September, October and November. So it really isn't anything to be panicking about at this point in time. The chance of hailstones is most certainly going to be there. The chance of damaging winds is also going to be there, but not as great as those hailstones. And if we do see hailstones, especially from the thunderstorms that do go severe, they're not expected to be large hailstones. It's expected to just be a big slush of ice coming down like we did see in Grafton last night. Can be equally severe, so take extra care on those roads later this evening. But at this point in time, we're not expecting a dramatic hailstorm outbreak. And we're also not expecting anything in the way of crazy rainfall accumulations as well. Even though we are talking about severe thunderstorms with quite a bit of punch, maximum rainfall accumulations of about 35 millimeters is what we're talking about from these thunderstorms later tonight. And they should be all but gone by tomorrow morning. Interesting stuff, that's for sure, across southeast Queensland, especially for this time of the year. And if you do have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below as well. And go and check out the Facebook page. I'll have plenty more information of, of these storms throughout the course of today over there. Let's just dive briefly up in towards far north Queensland. Some significant rainfall accumulations have been reported in the last 48 hours, in particularly 128 millimetres south of Innisfail at South Johnston. And rainfall accumulations between 40 to 80 millimetres have been quite widespread throughout the Cassidy Coast north to about Fishery Falls. It's exactly the rainfall that we did predict a couple of days ago, and it's, the forecast has panned out exactly as expected. It's a great sign of things to come forecast-wise up in far north Queensland, which is quite quickly becoming one of the most predictable regions weather-wise or rainfall-wise anywhere in Queensland, which I'm very happy to be able to say ahead of this upcoming wet season, which is said to be wetter than usual. But the good news for far north Queensland, at least over in the next couple of days, not much in the way of rainfall is expected. In fact, hardly anything in the way of rainfall is expected until we get out to about the 25th or so of August when rainfall could pipe up again from a few coastal showers moving through. But again, there's nothing expected to be too heavy or too crazy up there. So that's some good news up there. Uh, not only is it becoming rapidly one of the most predictable places rainfall-wise anywhere in Queensland and also in Australia, there's not a whole lot of rainfall coming on, on top of that triple figure rainfall dump that we saw earlier on in the week through Monday night, Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Unfortunately, can't say the same for very soggy New South Wales. As you can see here, we've got that big pink slick across the New South Wales coastline, which means more than 150 millimetres coming through in this 14-day period. And that is, again, just rainfall that they were not looking out for, rainfall that they were not asking for whatsoever. So let's break that down for you right now. As I've said in a Facebook post, and I have seen a little bit of uh, stuff that's going on around uh, significant rainfall coming in for New South Wales early next week, it, it is possible we're not talking about a widespread East Coast low rainfall outbreak dump slash whatever. Uh, we do have a few good showers coming through this morning and I think if you take a look at the radar picture right now where we do have those heavy periods of rainfall coming through across New South Wales just adding to Sydney's record where to start to the month of August on record as we head out towards mid-August this is exactly what the radar is going to look as we head out further on into the into next week as well Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday with a bit of rainfall coming through across New South Wales I think this is exactly the type of weather system that we are going to expect keep that in the back of your head for the next couple of minutes while I just break down what's coming for uh, in for New South Wales this morning we do have some heavier showers with some robust rainfall accumulations in them approaching 30 millimetres an hour and it's just expected to be one of those wet days for the Sydney metro area and that will extend up in towards the Hunter coastline as well and into parts of the mid-north coastline as well. Rainfall will slowly ease off as the day goes on and by this evening we should see showers begin to clear from the New South Wales coastline but for the most part around Sydney, Wollongong, Gosford and Newcastle the next few hours are going to be quite wet. Rainfall is definitely at its heaviest right now though and in the next couple of hours after about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning rainfall will then begin to slowly ease off. Further rain Rainfall accumulations of up to 50 millimetres are most certainly possible. I actually haven't looked at rainfall accumulations over on the New South Wales coastline so far today, but I imagine there's plenty of places already approaching 25 to 50 millimetres of rainfall in places. So again, more much uh, not needed rainfall rather for the New South Wales coastline, not something we're looking out for again. And as we push this forecast modelling out after a few dry days, including Friday, Saturday and Sunday, another cold front coming through on Sunday, which will bring snow across New South Wales. I'll get to that in just a second. But as another low pressure system then begins to brew into the Tasman Sea, 
through Sunday night and into early Monday morning, we'll see a resurgence in shower and storm activity across the New South Wales coastline, especially north of Narooma and Oladulla through Wollongong, Sydney, Gosford, Newcastle, and up towards Taree into the mid-north coastline, which will persist through Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Rainfall for Sydney and uh, surrounding areas will be heaviest from Sunday night through Monday, Tuesday, and into early Wednesday morning before this rainfall does then begin to slowly slide up the coastline. And what we've seen over the last six to 12 hours across New South Wales is basically what we're going to be seeing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then in towards early Thursday morning across much of New South Wales through early next week. So again, just cross-referencing back to the radar imagery, I think this is exactly the type of rainfall that we are going to see across New South Wales coming through in towards the early parts of next week. So save a picture in your head. Uh, I definitely think that that is what we're going to be seeing. I've seen plenty of talk over on the Facebook, uh, over on Facebook rather, about a large low pressure system slash east coast low type weather system approaching the New South Wales coastline through early next week. I really don't think that that's a possibility. I mean, even the major forecast models are really beginning to discount that now. Whilst a weak low pressure system of about 1,010 to 1,015 hectopascals is expected into the Tasman Sea at some time during Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and that will inevitably bring some showers and some heavier falls here and there through a brief period, especially through Monday and Tuesday morning, but potentially through Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday as well to the New South Wales coastline. I don't think we're going to be talking about anything too crazy. Definitely nothing in the way of damaging winds or flooding rainfall coming in for New South Wales. It's just going to be more showery stuff, more miserable weather that's going to add to New South Wales wet weather woes. And as you can see on the forecast modelling here, up to 100 millimetres is possible into a few places that could approach 125 millimetres, but we are definitely not writing off uh, triple figure rainfall accumulations anywhere north of about Narooma through Wollongong, including Sydney's eastern suburbs, and then through Gosford, New Newcastle, the Barrington Tops, up to about Kempsey and Coffs Harbour through the mid-north coast and into the northern rivers. Just a wet picture into the Tasman Sea. We knew August was going to be wet and this wet weather is expected to continue. Across southeastern Australia, a strong cold front is coming through this weekend. You can already start to see it approaching here offshore from Western Australia, moving into the Great Australian Bight. This one will have a bit of a punch to it through Friday night. It's expected to move through, uh, Friday morning rather, moving through the southeast corner of South Australia into the western part of Victoria through lunchtime on Friday and same time into the west coast of Tasmania with some uh, more at falls possible across the west coast of Tasmania, approaching 40 millimetres through Friday afternoon and into Friday evening. Heaps of showers and snowfall expected and just overall uh, turbulent weather expected across southeastern Australia through Friday night, Saturday and into Sunday, ahead of another strong cold front approaching from the southeast, uh, southwest rather on Saturday and Sunday. This one will bring plenty of snowfall to parts of the, uh, the higher elevations of Victoria and uh, New South Wales. And Saturday and Sunday definitely look like they're going to be wet days across southeastern Australia. Plenty of rainfall coming through, snowfall across the higher elevations, and up to 20 centimetres of snowfall expected across the New South Wales and the Victorian high country, and again in towards Tasmania, 15 to 25 centimetres of snow is expected there. Overall, though, it is some good rainfall coming through, and as you can see, rainfall accumulations from here on out, including the entirety of the weekend, widespread falls between 10 to 25 millimetres throughout Victoria, a wide swathe of southern New South Wales, parts of South Australia, and a wide swathe of Tasmania as well. Isolated falls into the southeast of South Australia will approach 50 millimetres and isolated falls to 75 millimetres are expected onto the west coast of Tasmania. None of these cold fronts are expected to be too severe. We will see a couple of strong wind gusts here and there across the west coast of Tasmania and potentially into the northeast corner of Tasmania as well. And some strong wind gusts slash blizzard conditions Friday night, Saturday and into early Sunday morning are also possible through the Victorian Alps and into the New South Wales high country as well. But I doubt that widespread severe weather warnings will be issued. This is just some much needed rainfall from another strong cold front coming through across southeastern Australia and it's just expected to be another weekend washout across this part of Australia. So nothing to be overly concerned about at this point in time. Typical weather for this time of the year. And again, I, I cannot stand it when I see these comments of back in my day, we called it winter. If this is exactly what it is. This is winter weather, stock standard winter weather, run of the mill winter weather. But this is a severe weather channel. We're going to be reporting on stuff that has the potential to be severe weather. And it's also a general weather forecast channel as well. And if general weather forecasting isn't your cup of tea, then switch it off. That is going to be all for me over in southeastern Australia, though. Over into the southwest of Western Australia, a strong cold front blew through late last night. Jeez, it was windy yesterday across the Perth metro area. We had gusts averaging 70 to 80 kilometres an hour for about six hours yesterday, and I'm sure it was even windier along the coastline, and especially down into the southwest. This cold front really did pack a punch wind-wise, and you can already see wind observations here at Forest Airport, 65 kilometre an hour wind gusts, about 1,000 kilometres ahead of the main frontal system itself, so it really is quite windy from this weather system here, uh, and it is expected to continue to be quite windy as this cold front blows through the uh, rest of the state, which is going to happen into the next couple of hours or so. Shall 
showers have been quite widespread over the last six hours or so. They're beginning to ease off of the Perth metro area, and we're expecting showers to pull away from the south coastal regions as well through this afternoon and into this evening. And by nightfall, we're expecting showers to be uh, very few and far between across the south coastal region between Albany down towards Esperance. And the last bit of rainfall from the leading edge of this conference will be moving through into the southeastern corner of WA. So it looks like dry conditions will return into the next six to eight hours or so across southwestern WA, including the Perth metro area. I've picked up 30 millimetres in my rain gauge, a lot of observations between 15 to 25 millimetres as well, and some isolated falls to 40 millimetres. So this is definitely quite a wet weather system, that's for sure. And more rainfall is uh, exactly what we need across the southwest of Western Australia. Perth is on track for its first winter since 1996. For all three months of winter, June, July and August, to exceed the average or the mean rainfall for the, uh, the respective months. So we're really looking at an above average winter in terms of rainfall, which is great to see. We really need it across southwest and Western Australia. And the rainfall is expected to continue to pile on. It will come through thicker and faster as we get out towards the end of next week, especially around Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, another strong weather system expected to come through across southwestern WA. And then much later on in towards August, we'll likely see another strong cold front as well. The cold front activity will then begin to drop off as we get uh, towards late August into early September. As I'm sure everybody got a taste yesterday, summer is not far away. That warm sun is just months away across southwestern WA. And some more good rainfall accumulations are possible. A further 100 millimetres is possible across southwestern WA through the Perth metro area and into the south coast throughout the remainder of August, which is again very, very good to see. That is going to do it for this uh, weather forecast update around Australia. I do hope you found it enjoyable and informative. And if you have, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Plenty of detail coming through today and heaps more detail expected in future forecast updates as well. So stick around for them by subscribing to the channel and click the join button down below to become one of the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I get an ignore on this show about them. So again, their support is as always much appreciated. But that is going to be all for me today. Have a great Thursday and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Just two more days of the week to go. And that's all for me, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.